How long did you work with Curtis? How many gigs did you do? What? Where did you play? Now, when I was with Curtis, I only toured with him seven years. Uh, he had his unfortunate accident in 1990. I started working with him in 83, and I started in the studio. Um, he came out one night and heard a band that I was with, said, Hey, cats, y'all want to go to Europe? I was like, let's do it. So uh, we did countless tours all over the world. Um, you know, I, I would not trade any of that experience for anything. Um, you know, not only do you get exposed to different cultures and things like that, you get exposed to different music wherever you go. Uh, the people, you find out how people are just the same. So, you know, Curtis was basically very responsible for giving me a more of a world view and through playing with him and through, you know, his music. And after his accident, um, you know, obviously he had, he didn't have any usage of his hands or anything. So he would call me up and go, I've got to, I've got to do this song for Aretha. Uh, would you come over and be my hands? And so I would have, you know, I'd play piano and um, I think we did a, uh, I can't remember the name of the movie now, but there was something that India Reed did with, with Curtis and I had to, you know, help him out with that. And then recording that last album was very tough because he was in the hospital, you know, a hospital bed and you had to hang the mic over his head. And, it, it was very sad, but it, it was also, it was inspiring to see that he, you know, he still had something to say and wanted to say it. So, Curtis, you know, taught me, you know, you just don't give up. Wow. That's deep. So, how did work, working with Curtis uh, and all that world view of touring and traveling and playing with them, how did that, how did you take some of those elements and apply those to the production studio world? Um, you know, when you're, when you're in your thirties and you're traveling, you tend to, you have a lot more energy and you go out every night. Um, and so I'd go to clubs and sometimes it would be house clubs. Sometimes it would be jazz clubs. It didn't matter, but you're taking in all this music and you're just taking in, they're playing the same notes. They're playing the same chords or even playing the same songs that you would hear here. But there's just that little bit of a whatever comes with their culture that they bring to it. And there, there were certain times where um, I would, you know, come in with a little, you know, back in the day of cassettes, where I would have a little cassette recorder and I'd, I'd hear like a street group or something and go, that's really cool. And maybe what they did, I would incorporate into a piece of music. Uh, it may just be a very small piece, you know, because I, you can't force something to work. You know, you have to, you know, you have to serve the music. Uh, the music is not serving you. Um, you know, I talk about that quite a bit. But um, a lot of these elements that you would pick up from traveling around the world, you would, you know, you would hear uh, like drum beats that you you don't hear here. Um, you know, you go to Europe and you're hearing techno music like nothing that you hear here. You might hear it three years from now. Um, so, you know, I'd come back with a little bit of that and try and incorporate things. And um, sometimes it was successful and sometimes, you know, okay, it was a nice try and nice idea, but let's move on. Mm -hmm.